class of 2008. And I'm Leslie. Southern region. Southern region. Okay. Yes. okay. Quick, let me say, quick reminder, because since you are streaming. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Should we pass the mic? It should be on. It is. Just pull it and point it right at your face. Okay. And then where are you going to be standing tonight so I can get the make sure the camera's pointed at you at the lectern predominantly? Yeah. Tonight? Yes. Okay, great. We've we got the presentation pulled up <laughs> right now. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? We did. But not on the other. The profile thing is not. I don't know. You can, when you go read this, and I wish it was a default, you can select yeah, it, I guess. No, and you can like, not be forced to sign all the way in. Oh. <laughs> okay. And what's your name? Slide advancer. Yes. Okay, you're awake. Okay, so is this started already? Yes. 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 Okay. 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 This is so strange to be live streamed. <laughs> well, welcome everybody to um, the kickoff for the 2024 class, uh, class of 2024. This is the mentor orientation. We have lovely faces a year in person and a lot of people online. So I'll just go over tonight's agenda. We're going to start off. We did have a little bit of food for those of you who are not here in person. You missed pizza, but um, and we had to change rooms. So sorry for the delay. Uh, but we'll start off with, with a mentor program overview. Uh, of course, and I'll go through some slides, um, kind of bring you up to speed on how many interns we have for the next year, where they're from, and how things will work. Um, and then we'll segue over to Vanessa, and she's going to go over the core training updates. Um, there's some, I'm sure there's some changes. And then we'll we'll have a, a sort of a group discussion to talk about the best um, practices for mentoring, because you know this year, like in previous years, um, the classes are going to be virtual. But then how do you engage your interns? And I think we've had some experience over the last couple of years and to just share those best practices with each other. We'll wrap up and we'll end of the meeting and uh, we'll say goodbye and see you guys next year. <laughs> so go ahead and get, get started. Okay, so here they are. Here we are. Here we are, 2024 mentors. We have a record 42 mentors. Um, and the, uh, the the names in bold print are, are new this year. Um, couple like Alan Newton and um, uh, Pam Flav have been mentors before. They took a little leave and now they're back. So we're, we're, we're saying they're new. Um, we have uh, <clears throat> 
We really are excited because we have 13 mentors from Central, not, um, glasses, five from Eastern, um, five from Northern, 18 from Southern. You can tell where Uma and I are from. <laughs> and um, for the 153 interns, um, we have 61 from Central, 21 from Eastern, 38 from Northern, and 33 from Southern. Okay. Okay. So we are going to ask the new mentors, and we're going to pass the mic around, the new mentors to please uh, introduce yourself. Um, your class, your name, your class year, what's your first memory of gardening or a special gardening memory? So we'll start with Austin. Stay on mic. <laughs> uh, my name is Austin Menta. Uh, class year is 2023. Uh, um, my first memory of gardening, uh, I think probably just like making a small vegetable garden with my parents when I was you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, planted the seed. And I'm Mary Cooper, class of 2023. Um, I think my first memories are also my parents. Uh, my dad was a, a mad rose guy. Um, and while I know nothing about gardening, it, it didn't get passed along very well, but that's what I remember. Who else is new? Uh, Kathy Lewis, class of 2022. Um, I think probably my first memory was with my dad planting bulbs, and it seemed really bizarre. So, <laughs> um, but it was a good lesson. Hi, my name is Andrea Epstein, and I am in the class of 2022, and I do not have any childhood memories of gardening. My first memory is when I moved, I grew up in a city, and I moved to the West Coast, and all of a sudden there was so much nature, and I just thought, what is this? What's happening? So that was an exciting moment. I'm Jen Panoski, class of 2022. Uh, my mother was also a master gardener, but from Cornell. And my first memory is of doing stuff in her garden. Uh, the thing I, probably the first thing, is either vegetable gardening or um, deadheading rhododendrons, which I used to love to do when I was little. <laughs> Laura Lupata, class of 2021, and my first memory is picking wild strawberries as a little girl. Alan Newton, class of 2020, and my earliest memory is planting vegetables and also having pollinator gardens in our yard. You're a new one, Betsy. You go for it. All right. Who's new? Um, I'm Betsy Lennon from 2021, and one of my first memories is my grandfather picking a peach out of his off of his peach tree in his garden in Sacramento. Wow. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca Reeves, uh, class year 2019. And I remember um, as a young girl going to my mom's friend's house and looking at the sunflowers and eating some fresh kale. I think that's it. Can I just say something different? Sure. Oh, yeah. I'm Maureen, I uh, grew up in Providence, and I have to say, I never saw a garden where I lived. We did not have gardens in South Providence. The dirt, and that's what I say to anybody that comes up to me at a kiosk, and I'll always caution them on what their dirt is like, because that's what it was like when I was growing up. <laughs> there was no gardens anywhere that you would ever see. So congratulations to Central. <laughs> we have to go along. Just need more mentors for that. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Okay. So mentor expectations. Uh, first, well, this is step one. 
So pat yourself on the back as you've uh, attended mentor orientation in person or virt virtually, or for those of you watching this later on. Um, we will have meet and greets by region next year, uh, just like we did this year. And we ask that you attend one in person um, so you can meet the incoming the interns. The dates are to be determined. Uh, they'll be arranged by the regional um, coordinators. Um, build a relationship with your intern virtually and in person. Uh, we are all, it's all virtual, but we are going to try our best to match you in your same region. But, you know, we'll talk a little bit later about the ways to engage um, with your interns so that uh, they feel like they're part of the program. Uh, there are four set class sessions that we're asking you that you try to attend. The first is um, January 10th, where we have the orientation meeting for the uh, interns. February 14th is the site assessment class. Uh, for February, uh, April 17th, uh, that's when we have the discussion about volunteerism. And April 24th is the last class. So if you can attend those, that would be awesome. Um, if you can't, just let us know. We'll try, if we have breakout sessions, we'll try to make sure we cover. Um, find out your intern's interest and provide suggested projects and opportunities to them by sometime in the middle, middle of April. Um, Vanessa will show you how to navigate, get connected to um, look for opportunities. Um, please consider attending one or more of the field sessions and inviting your interns. We'll talk about this a little bit more later. Invite your interns to volunteer with you before, after the class ends or even before the class ends because I know some projects start before then because that's, that's a really good way to um, uh, build relationships and we, we've kind of dragged some of our folks <laughs> over too. And then commit to communicating with the 2024 interns through the, through the end of December of 2024. But that doesn't mean it ends there because we're hoping that you forge a relationship that will last longer than just the calendar year. Oh, and Vanessa put this picture in because if you were at the fall uh, Master Gardener meeting, meeting, you probably heard from the, about the Autism Project. And this is a picture of the folks from the Autism Project, which is a, a, going to be a, we're going to have, we have a mentor that works with the Autism Project and uh, we have several interns that are from the same project. So um, I think it's amazing because they said they went from zero raised beds to, I don't know how many, 15, 20 or something like that. And they look like they have a lot of fun, so. <laughs> okay, roll the mentor. So really, it's really building that team feel during the course. Um, it's hard, it's, it's a little challenging because we're virtual, but also it kind of opens up different methods of communication. The, the other thing that's changed, and I don't know, I think those of you who have been mentors before will know this, but in the last few years since we've had virtual training, we've have the demographic has changed a lot. So you have a lot of people that are working. It's not just all retired folks. And you have folks that live in the city. We have a lot, as you see, can see in the central region, and a lot of them are from Providence. We have a lot of interns from that area. So we have younger folks, we have people working, we have retired folks. So it's, it's changed, the, the dynamic has changed a lot. So you kind of have to have different modes of communicating. Um, we found that some people like to text more than email. So, but really the goal is to, you know, help all the interns feel welcome and develop a sense of belonging as we as we have a more equitable and diverse and inclusive program. And I think that's what we had the discussion earlier about having, trying to have in-person sessions. One of the things we talked about is that, you know, we like having this program serve the entire state, not just, you know, people who can get to URI. So it's uh, it's been really exciting to see all the different kinds of interns we've had in the last few years, I think. Um, also to connect interns to volunteer opportunity, opportunities that will match their interests and skills. We have a lot of opportunities. It's hard to navigate sometimes, but hopefully, um, I think, we, especially with Get Connected, there is a plus because I think there's, it's easier to get, um, like find out where those opportunities are. And also, it's a good opportunity to identify future leaders, and Alan is here, so he's probably really glad because uh, they're always looking for um, new leadership. And uh, as many of you are in, you know, class of 2022, 2023, you can see that, you know, just because you're a new Master Gardener doesn't mean you don't have a lot of experience behind you and can be, a, you know, be a good mentor for next year. Okay, I'll turn it over to Corliss. Yeah.
<laughs> or you want me to talk about it? Okay. Yes. You. Okay. You might Matching be. interns to projects. Okay. This is just a little preview, and but I still kind of show you how to um, how to get there. But we have there's a map view and get connected, um, and um, it, it, you can see where the projects are in relation to um, the, the location. So. It, it, I think that'll help too, because you can kind of filter by location. Also, we have the volunteer fair videos, and I think I heard earlier that some of them may be being updated. Oh, yeah, the class video. Okay, excellent. So there'll be um, yeah, there'll be different ways to identify new projects. Yes, the catatonic cat. <laughs> And this is something new for those of you who are computer savvy. Would you be willing to help as a computer buddy? Um, there may be some interns that have uh, that need some help one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, with accessing and using Brightspace. Um, and it could be meeting at a public library, library and talking them through the steps. And I think we have Diane Madsen said she might be able to help. And if you're interested, just let Vanessa know. And um, we'll can yeah she'll keep track. Yeah. This is kind of an element along the lines of having an accessible program. We want to make sure that people feel comfortable with the computer. And sometimes people just want you to like sit down next to them and physically be there. So our core training TAs are going to be trained to have office hours. We'll talk about that in a moment. But it, this would be more of that like personalized touch. So if somebody can't come down to the university and meet with our undergrads, um, this would be an opportunity for them to sit down with you and kind of just like walk through the bright space, engage. Um, and so if you're willing to do that, let me know. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll send a lot around a little piece of paper or something because that could be good too. Um, and we will just connect you as people come to us. But if you're noticing that your interns are having trouble, send a note to the TA email and then we'll do that matchmaking. So we did have a few people not complete the course because of this in the past. So this is like an area we really wanted to focus on including my mother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I think this past year was a little challenging. We had to change systems, and some of us, like, we weren't in the new system. The interns were in the new system. So we should be all in the same system, right, for this coming year. Okay, now for the exciting part. <laughs> so interns are in the process of being matched. We just got the final list yesterday. Team person. Yeah, yeah. So they're not all matched. I know people that have been mentors before, they want to have their list of interns tonight. <laughs> and it's not happening, but we are working, working very hard to um, get it done. And it looks like um, you will have between two, three, four, or five um, interns, kind of depending on what region you're in and how many interns there are. But we're gonna try extremely hard to give all of you interns from your region. So if you're in the Southern region, you're gonna get Southern interns. If you are willing to um, mix and match, we can maybe give one of those mentors that's gonna have five or six, we can give them four instead. So let me know at the end if you're willing to have some from your region and some from some somewhere else. We've had to do that in the past before, but with 42 mentors, I think we're going to do our best. Yeah. Do our best. Um, so you got a frequently asked document um, email to you today. And um, when we match those uh, interns, you'll be getting a spreadsheet that tells you about your each of your interns. And we really ask for you to um, get in contact with your interns before the first class. Um, you can email them, text them, Zoom with them, whatever you want, whatever, whatever fits your style. Um, so sometime before January 13th. Okay, and let's see. Oh, so how do we do the matching? Uh, it's an art and science. It's an, uh, yes, yes. Um, as I, I said before, Northern has um, 38. Uh, 
Central has six, around 60. Eastern has 21. Southern has 34, total of 153. And um, new mentors in particular, you will get interns from your area, unless you tell me differently. Um, and interns, I try to group the interns so they're from the same um, city or the same neighborhood even. So I'm not going to have, you know, one person have somebody from Providence and Cranston and just because they're all central. Try to get them grouped together. So then your interns sometimes get together on their own. Um, and some of our returning mentors, you might have interns from different regions, no more than two, no more than two. And if you're unfamiliar with the projects in other regions, you can always look at you know, what's the volunteer opportunities that are listed and get connected. Oh, it's this one, I think. <laughs> anyway, that we could see, tell that we got on tag team a lot. So <laughs> communication. So um, I think you've already seen that we, we use the URI Master Gardener Mentors at gmail.com. It goes to both of us. So um, if um, we cover it for each other. So if I don't yeah. answer, Coros does and vice versa. And we'll respond and, and we'll follow up on your questions. So any questions you have, please feel free to reach out, you know, email that mailbox. We'll send you regular communications. We'll try not to block your, bombard, uh, yeah, bombard yeah. you, but yeah. just try to timely uh, communications that come from uh, Vanessa. Um, some of my reminders during the class, after class, um, sharing the intern volunteer hour report, which I know for those of you who are mentors this year, it was kind of sporadic because we switched systems, but we should be able to get it to you guys in the in a regular, you know, like every, every month or so, because that's really helpful to follow up with the interns, because sometimes they've done the, they volunteered, but not put in the system, and I found that happened a lot. And if they're having problems with Get Connected, then we can troubleshoot that as well. Um, so after today, we will send you an email with links to um, when we get done with the intern <laughs> contact information and the applications. The applications are going to look different. In the past, we had folders with separate applications. This year, because of the way the data was collected, it's going to be an Excel spreadsheet, so you'll have to scroll across. But I think it'll be easier. It's all going to be contained. And a copy of this presentation as well as a uh, the link to the recording of the presentation. I think there's one other document. I think the mentor expectation document as well. Yeah. Okay, so keep in mind, your job is to proactively support your interns. Um, you try to think about when you were an intern, what you appreciated that your mentor did, and you can do some of those things. Um, you, it's, it's nice for them to know a friendly face when they, they're volunteering or when they attend a meeting. You're that friendly face. Um, you're their gardening their experienced gardening friend. Even if you took the class last year, you have your 50 hours, so you know how to do it. <laughs> um, you can introduce them to projects. Um, a nice way is the project you're volunteering at. You, you invite them to come to that. Um, and you're available to answer their questions in a timely manner. You've got to follow through. So I say, if you have a question, please you know, email me or text me, and then I make sure that I respond. I don't let it go into the ethernet, yeah. never to be heard from again. Um, and remember, the success of your interns does not reflect on your ability as a mentor because it's up to them too. So don't feel like, you know, if you have a, an intern that is not finished the assignments and you've done everything, we're all adults. So it's not, it's not, totally up to you. It's two ways. Okay. So before we go to the next session, at the end, we're going to kind of talk about best practices. So start thinking about this, what some of the best practices you used for um, in mentoring, whether it's as a master gardener or in your regular life and what kinds of things um, you'd like to share with the group. At this point, we'll turn it over to Vanessa. Yeah. 
I just want to say thank you all so much for being mentors. This is such a special part of the program, and I know it has a lot to do with our success that we have and how many people continue volunteering with us and, and feel like they can really find their niche within, within the volunteer program because 150 people is a lot. Also, being online is a lot, but what we realize, that's what makes it so accessible. So we just feel like this is such a crucial piece, especially as we've moved to this online format. And it's kind of a lot to take that jump from, oh, I'm learning at home and now I'm gonna go volunteer with this group of people I don't know. So like like Corliss said, having that friendly face. And thank you so much to Uma and Corliss for having our record freak year of, of recruitment. You want them on your recruitment team, that's for sure. You're gonna get recruited by a <laughs> sports team. So, um, just a little update on the format. If you've taken the course in the past few years, you know that we have switched to a flipped classroom, which people are loving. So they're getting a lot more education than when you would just come and listen to the lectures live. Now you actually watch a pre-recorded lecture, which you can pause and stop and start and everything's captioned. And we've got a whole team of people doing chapters so they can start and stop the recordings. Um, we're getting a lot of fresh ones this year. So Madison, who you'll be hearing from in a moment, has been working with a lot of our instructors on getting those updated, which is awesome, including mine. I got to work on that on the to-do list. Um, and then they actually come to a live webinar and they put what they learned in those lectures to work, or they can actually ask questions. We have live Q&A sessions with the instructors. Sometimes we do like Jeopardy or give them a scenario and they talk about it in a small breakout group. So a lot of what you'll be doing as a mentor at those four sessions will be like one-on-one -on -one in those breakout rooms having some sort of discussion um, and we always kind of give you a prompt like oh you're going to talk about volunteerism this week or whatever it is um, they then complete a learning content checkup which is just like yeah i watched the video and i went to the live webinar and every other week they have an assessment because we i think we took away quizzes one year and people wanted that like they wanted to see that they were learning the content so this is our happy medium we we're always experimenting, so I'll continue on. You can see how else we're experimenting. This has actually been a favorite, although it's a little intimidating at first, people are always so happy that they did the site assessment project. So this will stay. Um, and so your role at the live webinar, those are six to 7.30 on a Wednesday evening. You'll have a Zoom link. It'll be your same link. So if you sign up for the orientation, you now have that same link that you should use for every single session. Um, next the orientation in january that is for the new class and that you, uh when you sign up in zoom you should be able to like add it to your calendar so then you have that link in a, in a safe spot every time um you'll attend those four class sessions and the orientation you're really just like introducing yourself and kind of sparking that conversation among your group because it's their first time they're meeting each other perhaps um and getting them to know each other for the site assessment day, it's like checking in with your interns because it's kind of like, oh, you've been in cl class for a while, how's it going? Um, answering questions, talking about the upcoming field sessions, which I am pumped about. New and improved and still under planning, but <laughs> you'll see. And then volunteerism class is really where it's like, oh, you know, I sent you some ideas for volunteering. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, there's not gonna be a ton of time to talk in that because we've added a whole new cultural competency training to that week last class is like reflecting on the experience so those are two in a row actually um and how will you stay in touch after the course this is where you might want to say oh let's go to this event together or let's volunteer together next month i don't know whatever you want to do um you're welcome you're all welcome to attend the other sessions just keep in mind that the course is really geared for them so questions should come from the interns you can ask some but just Keep that in mind, be mindful. Um, yep, supporting intern use of Zoom. Sometimes people use their lose their link, but we want them to only use the link that they use to register. So basically when the way the system works, when we are sending them out to their breakout rooms, they have to use their own individualized link so that they'll go to your room that we've assigned them to. So you don't wanna like share your Zoom link with them. They, you wanna make sure that they're always just re-registering if they lose their link or um, keeping it in a safe place. Um, notifications, there's a little button, I'll show them that you can silence notifications. That was a, a helpful thing for people who found it really distracting. Some people just wanna like be interacting in the chat the entire class and some people hate that. So I think by, by silencing the chat, that's a way of 
there's really, it's like, how do you appease everyone? <laughs> um, we've made a lot of lengths to make sure that this is an accessible course. So there's closed captioning. There's a way now in Zoom that you can have live closed captioning enabled. So like as I'm speaking now, you'll be able to see the captions, which is pretty cool. Um, and so we'll show them how to do that. Also, all the pre-recorded lectures have been captioned and edited, which is even better than like Netflix. Um, <laughs> recorded live webinars if they miss the class. So that's a thing for folks who are busy and maybe traveling, they can always go back and do this on their own time. And then the computer buddy system that we're trying out. Um, and then of course, I wanted to put a big focus on the volunteering end. Um, we have seen a de decline in volunteerism. And so I think that time of year when like the course ends and people are like, oh, what am I gonna do with my Wednesday night? And then they're deciding whether or not to volunteer. So right around early May is when you should really engage with your interns, because that's a crucial moment where we might kind of see them fall off from the program. So um, really inviting people to volunteer with us when that gardening season gets going. Um, and here are some ways to kind of match your interns with a good project. You may know that some of our projects are more physical, some of them are more educational, where you're not, you don't have as much physical requirements. Um, some are indoors, some are outdoors. And what's really nice is we have this new technology to help you filter and find what's right for you. So I'm gonna show you how to play with that. Um, there's other ways for them to actually find the right match for volunteers. So we're giving them two ways to start gaining hours towards their internship during the class this year. One is um, the volunteer module, which we had last year, I'll show you that in a second. The field sessions, which we've been mentioning. Um, so those are two ways. And then the second thing, the meet and greets was replacing that volunteer fair where we had everyone together in a big room and it was really loud. Now these are like regional meet and greets. So we encourage you to attend those along with your interns and kind of like, oh, hey, this is so-and-so. This is a project I think might work well for you. Um, and those dates are to be determined. The volunteers in class 13, they'll actually be asked to like watch the volunteer fair videos and email project leaders directly after that class. That's like part of their assignment. Um, then I'm pretty sure we're gonna actually connect them to this Get Connected opportunity page, even from the orientation, we're gonna show them if they wanna start peeking around. Um, and of course there will be help wanted in the dirt, but I think they need to know that they have to be proactive and reach out to people. Not everything's listed in the dirt or in Get Connected. So in some ways they have to do a little bit of searching. So let me show you more. Um, so this volunteer hour module is something that was developed by um, some of your fellow master gardeners. It's a module on indigenous food sovereignty, and it takes you through some videos and discussions and encourages you to like go try out a new recipe or go try one of our awesome indigenous restaurants that we have in Rhode Island and share about it so we can post about it on the internet. Super cool. This is a way for them to like gain volunteer hours from home during the course. We piloted it last year. Everyone who did it loved it and said that they were more willing to like work with an Indigenous Food Sovereignty project in the future, which we do have two, by the way. One, both are kind of getting up and running and are slow but steady and moving in a great direction. Um, and again, so they'll gain access to Get Connected in February, but they can go through this module when they gain access to that. We'll give more information there. And so this is our other new thing. Instead of having like the evening classes in person, we were toying with that idea. What we realized is people want that hands-on piece and they wanna start like getting hours towards their internships. So we thought this would be sort of like a, hey, class of 2024, you are welcome to come to these things. And um, we've got three of them planned. One is TBD. So let me know if you have ideas. One is um, where they'll actually do some seed cleaning at Kettle Pond in Charleston. So we're really excited about that one with our RIPS partners, Rhode Island Wild Plant Society and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, part of Reseeding Rhode Island. Brent Woodward. And um, so that's going to be a really cool thing. I think there will be like 50 people who can attend one session, 50 who can attend another, and that'll be sometime in February. And so what we're gonna do is like have them sign up and get connected. So that'll be another piece to be like, hey, you gotta use Get Connected. So let's start doing it during class and not introduce it at the very end. March session to be determined. We're thinking maybe something in the greenhouses. We'll let you know. Um, and then attending the home show and actually like being there as, at a kiosk. So folks who are more interested in that educational piece. Um, and then we have a newer project. You can see a photo sort of at the bottom in Pawtucket. It's part of the Gallego Court 
um, housing development. And there's this incredible large garden that has a lot of potential, but there's a lot of weed and pest pressure. And we've got some master gardeners who are also Southside Community Land Trust um, staff members who are going to lead this session. It's going to be like a physical, like, let's get do some clearing and get this garden ready. So that'll be a fun coming together moment. Um, no worries, only attend the ones that you feel comfortable with, but it would be awesome for you to come to those and invite your interns to as well. Um, more details to come, hopefully by the intern orientation, I have dates for them for these. Um, the meet and greets, again, this was our opportunity. They're usually at different locations around the state and um, there's usually food, a time for, interns to interact with project leaders and learn more about that because a lot of it has to do with the people right and whether or not you mesh with them somebody was saying that you don't have to belong to every single project but you want to find the one where you do feel like you kind of mesh with the team um and then of course volunteerism week 17 oh i gotta delete that volunteer opportunity guide we're not keeping that up because we're focusing on get connected but we do have everything that's on the right that's all of the awesome volunteer fair videos um, and we're trying to make sure all our new projects get those up so that they're like three to five minutes and people can watch and learn more about the projects in advance um, and you are encouraged to take a look at those as well we could probably um, send a link if you want to make that note we'll send a link to you all as well and um, you can take start playing with those videos as well so now I want to show you Hopefully you've all been in um, Get Connected. And I did send you the Get Connected user guide to kind of review in case you're not feeling comfortable with it because as mentors, that's a big piece we would really love for you to help your interns um, or at least direct them to the Get Connected help team. So take a look at that. There's a lot in the FAQs about that. You can read about it later. Um, but what's really cool is you don't need to have an account to start exploring our opportunities. So without being logged in, because we're not going to like add the interns to this until February, I think. We want to get them comfortable with Brightspace and then add something else in later on. So before February, they can actually log on and how do I find opportunities? Okay, there it is. Click on Master Gardener Program, and then you click on Opportunities. And you've probably seen that there's a whole list here, um, but what you don't know is that there's different views in the top right. So I wanted to first start with this little map view. So I'm scrolling around along at the top right, and I love this feature. So if you kind of zoom in to where you live, you can see which projects are around you. And as you click on them, you can kind of see, oh, here's Thrive Behavioral Health in Warwick, and now I can read more about it and see who my project leader is. And the virtual volunteer fair video should also be linked to here. So that's one nice thing where you can kind of filter by location because people are Rhode Islanders. <laughs> they don't have to be close to home. Okay, so that's one thing to show you. There's a calendar view, which really only works for our shifted out. I don't love that view. There's the list view the grid view. I think what I like better is by sorting and filtering. So again, like any new program, just come in and play with this. So I'm going to filter by program because we do have two programs on here, Food Recovery and Master Gardener. So I just want to filter by Master Gardener program and you see, oh, I've got a lot of pages. So let me filter even more. I'm going to filter it by, I want to be able to bring my kid with me to volunteer. So I'm going to click is family friendly and search. And all of these projects are cool with me bringing my child along, which is kind of interesting. Um, at least they say they are. And then I'm gonna X out that filter. I'm gonna filter it by wheelchair accessible. So yeah, I want a project that's wheelchair accessible. And now I'm gonna look. And I can then go to the math view and kind of see which ones are wheelchair accessible, which is kind of neat. Um, some other interesting filters. Oh, I think actually the outdoor one might be good for people who really don't want like a, they want to be more on the education end. They don't want to do the physical gardening. So I don't want an outdoor project. I'm going to X out these other ones. So it's not outdoors and it's part of the Master Gardener program. And so here are all of the ways that I can engage. I will note that a lot of these kiosks show up many times, but we haven't worked through all the kinks, um, but there's a lot of ways for people to interact. I'm hearing some feedback that people are like, oh, how do I volunteer? 
when I am somebody who works during the week, what I'd love to do is add like a weekend slash weeknight filter. Don't have it yet, but there's some opportunities for us to play with this in the future. Oh, here's a big one. So if you click on skill, there's a ton of stuff that's gonna start opening up to me. So say I'm really interested in at-home computer tasks. Um, interested in at-home computer, oh, I, I see. So I search that and this is gonna give me all the ways that I can volunteer from home, which is really interesting. Um, so I'm gonna X that one out. Another skill that people might like is, I'm interested in gardening for wildlife and pollinator habitat and native plants. So I click search and here's all of our awesome native plant focused gardens. And again, can then go to like the map filter and see, all right, which one's closest to me in North Kingston? Oh, I'm going over to Beachwood. So it's kind of cool. So yeah, y'all are some of the first people you showed that to. I'm, I think I'm gonna make like a little video for our new class to see how to play with this. I'll send that video along to you as well. So, um, but it would be cool for you between now and like the end of January to start playing with some of this stuff and learning about it once you see where your interns are from. And you can kind of, you're gonna be able to see all of their responses to the core training application. So you're gonna start getting a sense of who they are and what they're gonna be interested in right away. Um, so yeah, lots of ways to kind of do our research. Any questions on that? What? I think the only way is to go to calendar view, but I think the problem is not all of these are shifted out. So some of them just say that they're every day. So we haven't exactly, I know we really need that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll make a note for or Madison, if you don't mind sending me a little email that's like day of the week filtering, that's one of the, the things I have to kind of crack with our, our team. But yeah, not yet, but that's a great idea. Okay, so then we wanted to share a little bit about the resources that are available to you as well as your interns when you're looking for volunteering um, or in general. So the FAQs you heard about, those have been emailed to you and within those are the link to all of the slides from tonight. Um, and the RTA team is the other huge resource, and we have the fabulous Madison Tyner, one of the best uh, undergrads we've ever had in this role, I will say, incredibly proactive and smart and passionate about education, you can tell. Um, and so she's going to tell you a little bit about the TA team and how they're there to support the interns' experience in the class. Okay, it's kind of my fan, a little short. Um, well, hi, my name is Madison. Some of you might know me from the previous class if you were either as a mentor or if you were part of the class because I was part of the undergraduate TA team. So I've been able to see it on both sides as the lead, as a lead TA and part of the undergraduate team. And a lot of what we're able to do is help out with the course content itself, both if you need help with understanding something in the syllabus, if you need help navigating the course through Brightspace, that's something I'm very familiar with, especially since I've been helping to develop the Brightspace course itself. So if you have a question about how to navigate it, or your intern brings it up to you that maybe during a Brightspace session, or they contact you and say that, hey, I'm really struggling with this, they can reach out to me. And I'm really, really excited to be able to help you like with every every part of the bright space part because that's some part that can be very confusing i've been a student here at uri and it can definitely be a little bit challenging to maneuver um, but i'm more than happy to help with every part of that and some of the ways that i can do that is through live troubleshooting um, you can either come to uri you can shoot me an email and if you want a live one-on-one -on -one session then i'm more than happy to try and figure out a schedule that works with you and me um, another thing that i'll be able to do is through um, weekly zoom sessions i'll have those at five at 5 p.m. every Wednesday. That'll be right before the live webinar, which starts at 6 p.m. So right before we can start looking through techno different technology issues that you or an intern might be experiencing, and I can help you work through those there. Um, we also are gonna have one scheduled before the class starts, but um, those, those Zoom meetings will be held every Wednesday during each week during the class. And when you need to reach out to me, I'll be there for um, they'll be able to be contacted at mgpteachingassistant at gmail.com, which that will not be the only location that you see that. If you have access to the Brightspace, my email is littered everywhere, so you'll be able to see me in every place. I will not leave you alone if you need assistance. Um, another thing that I can also do to help if you're having trouble reaching out to any interns, if they're not 
if you're not having if you're having a little bit of a tough time contacting them then i can check to see what their progress is like in the course and see if there's any issues that are experiencing there if there's anything that I think I talked about this with Umar and Corliss earlier in a meeting that we wanted to make sure that like during mid-semester, like mid-course, we're making sure to kind of give out reports of how the students are doing. So if you're kind of seeing a trend that someone might be struggling or someone might be excelling and you want to kind of just see how that's reflected in the course, I'll be more than happy to provide a report of how your interns are doing and see if there's anything that they might mention in assignments that they might be interested in. I can relay those to you that way. Okay, I want to make sure that I press this right. All right, so not... I will not be the only person in, as part of the core training team. We're going to have a lovely um, t teaching assistant team of, I believe, four other people. Lovely. Oh, five. Yeah, it was going to be a whole five of us. That's even that's one more than last year, so that'll be great. And they'll be helping with out with different special projects and other other things like that. But if I'm not available, then they'll be available also to contact. They'll help train them in how to um, assist with Brightspace or Zoom or anything like that. So we're going to have a nice wide variety of people that can be helping you out um, with different different components. And again, the way that you'll be able to contact them is through that MGP teaching assistant email. All right. And next, as I mentioned before, we're also going to have a um, Brightspace help session the week before class starts. That's the Wednesday. It'll also be at 6 p.m. on Zoom. And I believe we're going to have an IT person, an IT um, staffing person here um, that'll be able to assist us um, a little bit more in depth with the, Bright with the Brightspace course. So if there's questions that I can't answer, then he might be able to answer them. And also throughout the course, if there's any questions that I'm not able to answer, then I will most definitely go and ask other people questions so that I can help get everybody's questions answered. Um, and once again, I just want to remind, if you can't make the 5 p.m. Wednesday sessions, that is totally fine. Please bother me, please email me, and I will be more than happy to set up a different time. I have a lot of different availability during the spring semester, so if you if the 5 p.m. time doesn't work, which I completely understand if it doesn't, I'm more than happy to meet if, if needed, like on a, on a weekend or later in the afternoon on a different day. I'm more than happy to do that, so don't be afraid to reach out to me. I love to answer emails and make sure everyone's well, well versed in the course. All right, and I think that that is all from me, so I will turn it to the next slide, and I'll pass it over to whoever's next. Get back the line. Tag team. What we did last, well, what this we, year, <laughs> what we're going to be doing this year is we have offered drop-in Zoom help before those four, four dates that, well, those three dates, three, four, four, four dates that we um, invite you to come. To participate and it's uh, totally optional like you're having trouble with something you come to the zoom and we talk about it um, yeah, hmm? mentors, yeah. for the me this is just for mentors uh, okay you keep oh oh yeah and then as Madison said the TA team will hold virtual office hours every Wednesday before the live webinars for um, anybody who wants to drop in um, yeah and I I think we might also ask check with you guys to see if that works to have the drop-in sessions for the mentors at 5:30 to 6 because the class starts at 6. So I think you might send a group like a poll just to yeah. find out what's the best time. It's for you. It's really just like if you have any questions or if anything's come up, it very it's optional in addition to just pinging us <laughs> if you have a question. Let's see if we can get this over there. Okay this point we're going to switch over right okay so remember when we said earlier just hold that thought you know think of the way different methods um, you use to engage with your mentors or in any kind of mentoring experience um, and so we thought it would be a good opportunity to share some of those best practices so we did ask an, a mentor who was not here today um, she was gonna she was in plan to be here but then something came up so um, and she's been a mentor for a while and is she seemed to have different uh, ways of engaging with her interns. And so she said that she tried to provide opportunities for her, she and her interns to meet at local master gardener project sites. And in this case, I think, um, I forget where they are, but you know, she, she's got some examples here in which the project leaders were also in attendance, which would be great because, you know, the meet and greets, we do have project leaders, but sometimes there's so many people, it's hard to get to talk. And sometimes the, the, 
the, I think this year we got feedback that some of the meet and greets were so early on, the interns said that they just didn't know what to sign up for. Um, but she said that this, you know, it could be a previously previously scheduled meeting or event, or if the project leader, um, you know, if they were available and willing, they could, um, you know, so you could set up a separate meeting. And so that was a really good way to engage with her interns um, early on and throughout the, uh, the 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 classes. So they, I think that's the part. It's like you know, there's so much schoolwork that folks forget that there's a volunteer aspect and that the sooner we can introduce them to volunteerism, the better it is. And that's also more fun. I mean, let's face it, it's more fun to get your hands uh, dirty. That's why you wanted, that's why we did the program. You know, it's like, that was the fun stuff. So let's see how we can do this. Because <laughs> we can't, oh, okay. So who wants to start? What's something that you've done? Oh, we changed it. Aren't those? Yeah. Yeah, those. I got you a boosted one. 
this room is very popular, so there is a lot of use. The batteries died. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on two aspects. One is getting through the computer programs right in the beginning. And I really tried to make uh, the interns feel comfortable, some, some tricks, and, and had the resources available for them. And then the second area that I spent a lot of time with them was on the site project. Can I say, nod your head? Yes. yes. <laughs> she was my mentor. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I gave them some hints right off the bat, like for instance, where you can get your home sited on a piece of land at the town hall. Yeah, I know. And that and that that, that that's a big big worry right away. How do I know how big my house is, how big my lot is? So little things like that based on my experiences, you know, as an intern. That's what I try and relate back to them. And if it helps Last year as a mentor, and she was a mentor to my mentor. Or wait a minute, I was a mentee. Yeah, whatever. She helped me out. <laughs> Which is totally above and beyond. Doesn't have to be to scale, but if people are like really wanting it to be to scale, that's beautiful. So you show them how to get the plot. Met. I think, and then what you were saying is like this whole idea of everyone should be a mentor so all y'all like drank that kool-aid we don't have to talk about it but um we're hearing about some instances where people don't feel a sense of belonging i just heard about an instance where like at the big volunteer recognition event someone was asked to leave their table because the group wanted to sit there and it's like how do we change the culture of our organization and i think having a mentor program and having people who who get it and are creating that welcoming culture and then if you just going to say, if you see that kind of other behavior, just being like, hey, guys, that's not why we're a part of this. Or if you see like the, it's the only way culture change can happen. It's not going to come from me, but it's going to come from y'all. Um, so just wanted to mention that. Any other thoughts? Um, I know with mine, I, one year I said, well, well, after the course was over, we'll go on Zoom, you know, every couple of weeks. And that was a bust because they wanted to volunteer and they didn't want to see me on Zoom anymore. So, <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's fine. So I, so then last year I said, you know, every other week, if you want to, we'll get together and talk about how things are going. And that worked really well. And that worked really well. I had a few that dedicated, they would ask me questions, they would get to know each other. We, I have a couple that are fast friends now. So um, it's just, you have to connect the way they want you to connect. Yeah. Did you do virtually? I did it virtually because Uma and I are the co-leaders and there were only three mentors in the North. In the north. So we, so we took all of our interns in the north. Mystic. Yeah. yeah, I live in Westerly. And I'm mean, Mystic. But <laughs> I've got to tell you, I was very excited. Was Two of my interns, one from Massachusetts and one from Rumford or something, they came down to Wilcox Park and volunteered. Actually, Corliss has a lot of volunteers at Wilcox Park, and I think it has to do with how welcoming and the culture. I mean, Uma can probably speak to that, right? The culture she creates there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's a lot of fun. It's, a lot. it's I, about fun. I did the same thing. Um, big, well, not just last. Well, yeah, yeah. I that would be a fun one. Rob, I went. We we uh, the meet and greet that this year. It was so much fun to go up there. So actually, it's been great because we've been exploring other regions. There's so many great projects everywhere else. So it's been fun having um, interns in other areas. One of my interns this year, um, some of you might know him. He's, um, his name is Lenny, and he's very, um, he's very engaging. But he, he were a volunteer with the Autism Project and said it was probably his favorite one to do. Um, I think it's just been fun to meet all the different interns. All the, interns from all over it's been really a lot of fun the last couple of years that i've been a mentor yeah. um one of the things that we have heard one of the not so much nice things um i think we all get frustrated sometimes because you'll send emails and some people don't respond 
Yes. So we did. <laughs> So we're going to talk about that at the orientation, about expectations that we have of our interns. It shouldn't have to tell adults to really, you know, respond. But um, everybody gets busy and there's a lot of email. So um, that's something we'll just remind folks that, you know, if your mentor reaches out to you, please acknowledge their message. So, yeah. Not a long email, just I got it. I might say one of my new jobs is I go on Google Voice and I text people and I say, check your email. <laughs> when we like are getting ghosted by a leader or whatever I'm like have you not heard from them <laughs> so that's been my new tactic I feel like text is just the thing now like email is yeah. no nobody likes it yeah Hi, what's the yeah. best way to communicate and because a lot of people are working and stuff I know mean, that this year's interns we met um, either before or after the class it just seemed to work out for them Last year's mentors that we I set up separate Zoom sessions and just had them as optional. It's like you know whoever wants to call in, and it was a little easier because I would think we were all in the southern region. So, um, but um, yeah, I mean anything goes. It's just it's just getting to know people. But I, th I think inviting them to your projects is really a good way to um, establish a connection. Yeah, I'm hearing. So one question is asking how they want to communicate. Another is asking, do you want to meet up in person? Do you want to meet up virtually just to kind of like have this relationship and conversation, inviting them to volunteer? What other things have we heard? Um, some people are, you know, building friendships around this and still hanging out. And I think that's huge because we're in a time of disconnection. And um, I think that's what's beautiful about the Master Gardener program is like, oh, you will always have something in common. Like you can always talk plants, right? <laughs> Pet people are the best people. Yeah. Um, I like the virtual. Sorry, I like the virtual uh, fair and the meet and greets. But it would be also nice if we could have like uh, projects open house. Like yeah. if you can just have a day where the leader is there, and they just know, or all of our interns know, this Saturday or this Tuesday, they can just drop in yeah. and meet the leader, and maybe meet some people that are also volunteering there at that project. Uh, I did it with Kettle Pond. I invited my interns to Kettle Pond when I was there. So that was a project that I did. And I discussed also like uh, how to get into the green. I would make connections for them. Like if the greenhouses weren't up and running, I'd say, well, this is how you connect with this or this is when this project starts generally. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that they just have that opportunity to just drop in and see the project where it is, how, how, how far it is to get to and not just go and meet the leader and see. I know it's difficult, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that it's not, but maybe just a few of the projects could do open yeah. houses. No, that would be, be, be great, be great. I would love to not coordinate that, but I would love to <laughs> share, I would love to share that idea with your fellow project leaders that like, you should put something in the dirt and say, hey, all interns are welcome yeah, to open house. Day. Oh, yeah. Especially the projects it's that are looking for volunteers, because this is a good way to. Um, and all the projects should be looking for volunteers. <laughs> well, I know. I know we. Yeah. For legacy. We have a new category. I know as um, part of, the, I'm a chair of the Leadership Development Committee, and so we're recruiting leaders all the time. And um, I found it really helpful to go and visit the sites for where I'm rec re you know, recruiting. But I also thought it'd be really good for us if we have someone who is interested in a project to help them make that connection and visit with them to those sites. You know, it may not be our particular site that we're working in, but I think it's really helpful. I mean, you, you learn lots of amazing things are going on all around the state. And you wouldn't know that if you are just reading or just watching a virtual video, you know, it, it's just, um, you get someone really excited about something if you've been there yourself and you've seen it. Yeah, and you can put all those hours under a mentor program and get connected and get volunteer hours just for visiting our projects. We would love for you to get more <laughs> if you want to go on a little tour of the projects this season. Could be fun. Okay. Is there an idea back there? Just here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Oh, let's see some chat oh. stuff. Thanks, Katie. I think I had mine open and then I closed it. Okay, my interns and I have done tours of each other's yards. How fun. People can come here even if they don't want us. Well, people can come even if they don't want us to visit their yard. Oh, I see. 
it's nice because we can talk about gardening successes and struggles we have. So connecting on that gar uh, garden connection and then they troubleshoot together. Um, this is my first time as a mentor, but I did like how mine would check in on us every now and then via email. Gatherings were still not considered safe at the time, so we couldn't meet. So yeah, definitely proactively reaching out. Just to check in, like, how are you doing? How are you feeling about the class? Are you enjoying it? Challenging? Blah. And then not taking it personally, because you will not hear from some of them. So yeah, again, trying all the modes of communication. I just heard of a new app. So if you have like tech savvy people and you're tech savvy, there's something called group me. You can kind of like text on that. There's, so yeah, there's plenty of ways to communicate. There's too many ways to communicate these days. <laughs> but there's a way for everybody, right? But there's a way for everyone. Yeah, so see what- And they turned supplied for this. So they wanted to be part of this program. So- we'll Oh, it's so funny here. when you have like the instructors they're like, wow, this is the opposite of teaching undergrads who yeah. don't want to be here. Like the adult learners are like, teach me more. So it's fun. It'll be a fun experience, I think, if it's your first time. Yeah. I don't think, I think that's it, right? There's a few closing slides, slides and then, closing slides. Yeah. Okay. So that was a great suggestions. And I would say that if you some, if something else comes to mind, share it with the group. And um, maybe we can keep that on our FAQ as well. Yeah. Um, so next steps. Um, once we send out the link, you can just take, take a look at your intern matches and the other resources. Again, it's going to be an Excel spreadsheet, so you kind of have to scroll along to see the answers. But uh, having reviewed, well, some of us reviewed the applications, there's some, the, the answers are pretty intense. You'll get a feel for these people, the folks that you have. And just make sure you get in touch with your intern before the orientation se session. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I texted. I emailed, I did it all, you know, I, I figured I'd, I'd get them one way or the other. And if I didn't hear from them, then I um, actually old, old school telephoned them. So. I did, I did. Yeah, I know. Show my age. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so if you don't have Brightspace, get access to, gain access to Brightspace on January 10th, including the Zoom link. And then as Vanessa said, that'll be your link to get into the class um, for the rest of the se uh, season. season. And it, it is kind of confusing. It said, attend the class. This is virtually. Virtually. Yeah. Virtually, you're going to attend the class um, orientation on the 10th at 6. And um, you can even attend some of the optional, you know, tech, Zoom tech sessions if, you know, you'd like to. Can I weigh in on that? I think um, encouraging your interns to really try out Brightspace between the 10th and the 17th so that they can come to that one on the 17th if they're feeling the struggles. So really encourage them to be proactive. Yeah. Yeah, we're just going to have to, we haven't added anyone to the class yet, but it'll be your same login, I think. Yeah, it stays the same. Yeah, it'll be your same one. Yeah. And then we'll just have to add you to our 2024 yeah. version around the 10th. You'll get access to it. Um, and the first webinar, first class is January 24th. And then, as we said before, we'll have some optional mentor drop in sessions, um, possibly before the class, but maybe not ending at 6 a.m. 6 p.m. I mean, I love 6 a.m. Okay, there's, <laughs> I love these pictures. Thanks, Vanessa. <laughs> there's joy in the journey. We've all been through the, this path. And, uh, oh, I like this. You, you know, know you're a master gardener when you're in a national park and you have to resist the urge to pull weeds. <laughs> People share all their plant problems with you. Yes, I went to the grocery store once and I forgot to take my hand. <laughs> And they're calling me by name, and my name's Corliss, so I mean, yeah. you have to know me. And they're asking me plant questions. Like, what is going on? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> and the yard is in better shape than the inside. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you guys for joining us, and have a great holiday season, and yes. we'll see you virtually next year. Thank you. Thank you. Please feed your family.
families. 